Look at these guys in masks. Can you tell which one isn't human? It's the one on the left. Look closely, and you'll see that the skin around its eyes is green. Alice, Beth, Cece, and Diana are standing in line to get a new video game. Alice is standing between Beth and Cece. Cece is in front of two people, and Diana is in front of her. Can you say in which order the girls stand? There are four of them. If Cece is standing in front of two people, and Diana is in front of her, then Diana is the first one, and Cece is the second one. Then, Alice is standing between Beth and Cece. So, the third person is Alice, and the last one is Beth. There are ten students in class. Six of them learn French, and seven people learn Spanish. If every student learns at least one foreign language, how many students learn both French and Spanish? Six plus seven is 13. And since there are just 10 students, the additional three are the ones that learn both languages. A police officer was following a robber around the city. Suddenly, the criminal rushed toward a hospital and disappeared. When the police officer entered the building, she saw three people. One of them must be the robber, who had dressed up to pretend to be a doctor. Can you tell who the criminal is? It's the girl on the left. Look at her shoes. They're dirty. She didn't have time to clean or change them. Taya was getting ready for a job interview when the lights went off. She was in a rush and didn't have time to wait till the lights were back on. The girl was almost ready. She only needed to put on her socks and boots. Taya had socks of three different colors, black, white, and gray. She didn't care what color her socks would be, but she needed two socks of the same color. How many socks should Taya take to make sure there will be at least one matching pair? She just needs four. Even if the first three are of different colors, the fourth one will either be black, white, or brown, matching one of the others. Devin takes a bath only on even days of the month. How many times a year does he take a bath? Well, let's see. Except for February, all months have 30 or 31 days. In a month, there are 15 even days. So, it's 15 multiplied by 11. In February, there are 28 or 29 days, which means 14 even days in any case. So, we add 14. In total, Devin takes a bath 179 times a year. It's an early Monday morning. William and Daniel are both driving to work. But who is doing something wrong? Daniel, look, he's driving way above the speed limit. Cassie and Fawn are also driving above the speed limit because they're in a hurry. Cassie is late for her interview, and Fawn is rushing to a hospital. Who's breaking more rules? Fawn, they're both driving way above the speed limit, but Fawn isn't wearing her seatbelt. Caspian and Delaney are getting ready for a summer barbecue party. It's Delaney's birthday. Caspian is cooking, and Delaney is busy with the decorations. Who is not very smart? Caspian. He's left the meat in the sun, and it's slowly going bad while he's cooking. Everly and Bridget are sisters, and they're both going out on a date tonight. 
They both play tennis, so they told their parents that they were going to practice. Who's worse at lying? Bridget. Both are dressed too fancy for the training, but at least Everly has a backpack and her equipment with her. Her parents will probably think she'll change later. Bridget doesn't even have her tennis racket with her. Nellie and Genesis are cleaning windows in their house. They're both in a pretty dangerous position now, hanging out of the windows. But who's in greater danger? Genesis. She's cleaning the window on a higher floor. Easton didn't let his daughter go to her friend's birthday party. He told her to do her homework instead. Karina's daughter had to spend all day in her bedroom too, instead of going to the movies. The teenagers came down to dinner at 7 o'clock. Whose daughter had snuck out of the house? Easton's. It's raining, and his daughter's hair is wet. She must have been outside. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She tried to find her way back, but instead, she stumbled across a witch's house. She patted a black cat and asked the witch to take her back home. The witch was busy with some math, and she had a riddle for Esme. If she solved it, she'd be free to go. If not, Esme would have to stay with the witch forever and do math with her. Using only pluses and minuses, Esme had to make this equation correct. Can you help her? Esme only needs four minuses. She should put them right there. In a parallel universe, people are only allowed to have fun and eat candies. No one ever reads or studies there. Mrs. Rellum comes back home after a long day at a club. Her three daughters have spent the whole day at home. The woman asks them what they've been doing. Hannah answers she's been playing computer games all day long. Ellie says she's spent the day outside with her friends, playing in the park. Ava claims she's been in bed all day, doing nothing and eating cake. Still, Mrs. Rellum can tell that one of her daughters is lying. That daughter actually spent the whole day studying. Who is it? It's Hannah. Take a closer look at her desk. There's an open book and a copy book. If she was playing computer games, they wouldn't be there. Emmeline was at her chemistry exam, trying to get an A. Unfortunately, the professor gave her a task that she couldn't solve. Then the professor asked her to crack a riddle to see if she could think fast. I have three daughters. Rain is now twice as old as Phoenix will be when Calliope is as old as Rain is now. Who is my oldest daughter and who is the youngest? Can you help Emmeline crack this riddle? Rain is older than Phoenix and Calliope, because in the future, Calliope will be the same age and Phoenix will be half as old. So, obviously, Calliope is the middle sister and Phoenix is the youngest. Nellie is approaching a picturesque field. She's carrying a package. If she doesn't manage to open it before reaching the field, she won't survive. Can you guess what's in the package? Nellie is skydiving. There's a parachute in her package. After a safe landing, Nellie decides to take a walk in a sunflower field. Can you help her spot three odd things about this area? This straw man is winking. This sunflower has teeth. And there are two suns in the sky. Nellie walks too far and gets lost in the woods. She wanders around for a while and meets four guys sitting on one big tree. Can you help her rank them in order of foolishness?
The fourth person is cutting the branch where he sits, so he's the silliest. The first person is sitting on the branch that will soon be cut by the second guy. So the first person is the second most foolish. The second person doesn't see that he's about to fall too, so he's the third. And finally, the third guy. He's a bad person, but definitely not a stupid one. Nellie moves on and finds a highway. Three people offer to give her a ride to the nearest town. Can you help Nellie choose the safest driver? Take a look at this guy's car. Its tires are flat, and there's a puddle of engine oil spilled out of the car. Probably not the safest choice. Oh. This beautiful lady and her car are both translucent because they're ghosts. As for this gloomy trucker, he looks pretty reliable. Yeah. Nellie enters a local coffee shop and meets two ladies. Both ladies tell her that they are daughters of a famous billionaire. Can you guess who's lying? The lady on the right is a liar. The logo on her t-shirt is fake. Therefore, she's not rich. Nellie doesn't have any money to buy food. The coffee shop manager feels sorry for her and offers Nellie a free lunch. But first, she has to solve his tricky riddle. Nellie agrees. Here's the task. People have stepped on me, but not many. I never stay full for long. I have a dark side. What am I? Can you help Nellie win her free food? The correct answer is the moon. Nellie is eating and looking through the pictures hanging on the wall. Suddenly, she sees something weird. Can you spot any odd details too? This person appears in both pictures, looking young and pretty. But the time distance between these two photos is 100 years. Nellie enters a flower shop and sees the owner putting bouquets in big vases. If he puts one bouquet per vase, he will end up with one extra bouquet. And if he puts two bouquets per vase, he will end up with one extra vase. How many vases and bouquets does he have? He has three vases and four bouquets. The flower shop owner offers Nellie a job. He has just received a delivery. There are three boxes labeled red roses, white roses, and red and white roses. Each box is labeled incorrectly. <clears throat> Nellie has just one chance to pick up a flower from any box and then label the boxes correctly. Can you help her accomplish this task? Nellie should take a flower from the box labeled as red and white roses. Since they're labeled incorrectly, this box should contain either red roses only or white roses only. Let's suppose that Nellie finds the red roses. Now she can label this box correctly. We know that the white box cannot have white roses. Therefore, now Nellie can label the remaining two boxes correctly. After earning some cash, Nellie decides to book a room in the local hotel to get some rest. The manager offers her to choose from three empty rooms. Can you help Nellie pick the best option? There are cracks in the window glass in the first room. Very unsafe. Hmm. And there's a zombie hiding under the bed in the third room. So Nellie should choose the second one. Nellie locks herself in the room. She opens the window and stands nearby, breathing fresh air. Suddenly, she throws something out of the window. Nellie passes out very soon after doing that. That's a mystery because she's perfectly healthy and nobody did anything to her because the door is locked. Can you find any logical explanation for what happened here? Nellie decided to throw a boomerang out of the window. The boomerang went to the maximum distance and returned back straight to her head. After a while, Nellie wakes up with a headache. She goes to the local shop to buy some aspirin. She spots three odd things about this place.
Can you see them too? There's corn on the shelf along with napkins and toilet paper. The announcement offers an 800% discount. That's too good to be true. And finally, the shopkeeper is wearing two pairs of glasses. Suddenly, the shopkeeper begins to yell, Someone stole my money! And he locks the customers inside the shop and calls the police. They arrive and question four suspects. Maya says, I came here to buy water for my 12 o'clock yoga class. I'm 20 minutes late because of you. Bob says, What's the point of stealing cash? Everyone knows that people use cards nowadays. Hmm. Lily says, This shopkeeper is a bad person. He deserved that. And Nellie replies, Sorry, I was focusing on my own purchase. I didn't see anything suspicious. After hearing that the officers had arrested one person, can you guess who? Maya, take a look at the clock on the wall. It's only 10 a.m. She's not late, therefore she's lying. Nellie is walking down the street. She sees a cozy garage sale organized by Miss Green. The fixed price for any item is only $1. Amy buys an old dress. Phil takes this beautiful antique vase, and Vivienne purchases a shabby vintage suitcase. Nellie comes over to Miss Green and says, Oh. Madam, you've just sold an expensive thing for a song. What? What does she mean? Can you guess? Vivian lifts this suitcase quite easily, so it's probably empty. And besides, it has holes in the bottom. Therefore, it can't be precious. This vase isn't antique. It has a sticker from a dollar store. Although this dress is dirty and torn, it has a large, expensive brooch pinned to it. So many gemstones can't cost just one dollar. Nellie asks Miss Green if she can use her bathroom. Miss Green says, Sure, it's at the end of the corridor. Nellie is walking down the corridor and confuses the doors. Nellie ends up in this messy kitchen. Huh? The door won't open. Can you help Nellie find a key? It's in the teapot. And Miss Green enters the kitchen and tells Nellie, I'm a witch, young lady, and I'm going to give you a gift if you manage to solve my riddle. Oh, yes. Nellie agrees. Here's the task. It starts with tea, it ends with tea, and it's full of tea. What is it? Can you solve this mystery? The correct answer is a teapot, again. Miss Green brings Nellie to her dusty basement and says, One of these three doors leads to a magical world, and the other two are fake. You have only one attempt to choose the correct door. Good luck. Oh, yeah. Can you help Nellie out? She should choose the third door. Take a look at the floor. Dusty footprints lead to the third door only, which means that doors one and two are fake. Nellie opens the third door and enters an enchanted forest. There are four ways to cross it, but all four passages are pretty dangerous. A hungry dragon is waiting for her on the first route. A massive fire is burning all over the second path. And the third path is basically a windowless tunnel. And the fourth passage is full of scorpions and snakes. Can you help Nellie choose the right path? She should pick the third way. The tunnel doesn't have windows, but who said it doesn't have an exit? Nellie walks the tunnel and finds herself in a beautiful castle. The guard says, This castle is yours if you manage to crack my riddle. I can fill a room, but I take up no space. What am I? Can you help Nellie win the castle? The correct answer is light. Scarlett just moved into her new apartment three days ago. One evening, she was reading before bed when she heard a knock on the door. She opened the door 
and there was a confused man who said, Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I just moved in here earlier today, and I thought it was my apartment. Oh, oh once again, sorry, and, and good night. Then he left. Scarlet didn't believe that it was just a mistake and reported the man to the police. Why? The problem was that the guy had knocked. If he had really thought it was his room, he would have tried to open it with his own keys. Nora lived alone in the city suburbs. She called the police and reported that someone had robbed her house and stolen her savings that she had been keeping in a pair of socks on one of her wardrobe shelves. Detective Callum arrived with the police, took a look at the room, and closed the case, claiming that the lady was lying. Why did he think so? The room was absolutely clean. If someone had robbed the house, they would have made a mess while searching for money. The person who took the money must have known exactly where it was, which is unrealistic. Mrs. Ledger is a high school history teacher. One day, she started a sudden oral test, asking students questions from the back of the book. If the students figure out the order in which she asks, they can find the answer to their question in advance. The first three people she asked were Atlas, Eleanor, and Gracelyn. There are Zoe, Luca, Sienna, and Victoria left. Can you guess who will answer which question? Mrs. Ledger is asking students in alphabetical order. So up next is Luca, then Sienna, then Victoria, and Zoe. Another day, another test. Once again, Mrs. Ledger is asking students. This time, the first ones to answer were Zoe, Luca, and Atlas. In which order will she ask the remaining students? This time, she started with people with the shortest names. There are three letters in Zoe, four in Luca, and five in Atlas. The next one is Sienna, who has six letters in her name, then Eleanor with seven letters, Victoria with eight letters, and Gracelyn with nine. Ellie found herself locked in a dungeon and couldn't remember what had happened. She looked around and saw a door that could have been a way out, but it required a passcode, and she didn't know it. Luckily, there was a hint. 1802. 3004-0803-2611. She has just one chance, and if Ellie doesn't get it right, the dungeon will get locked forever. Can you help her decide which password is the correct one? Take a closer look. Some numbers have faded away a bit. This is probably because they had been used the most. They are 1, 2, and 6. The only code that uses all of them is the last one, 2611. It must be this one. Aurora came home after a long day at the university and was excited to eat the mint-flavored ice cream she had bought in the morning. But when she opened the freezer, the ice cream was gone. Aurora asked her three siblings who had eaten her ice cream, and they all denied it. Dawn said, I'm on a diet, and I haven't been eating ice cream and stuff for a week now. Everett said, Dude, I had my chips. There was no need to eat your ice cream this time. Phoenix said, First, I don't like mint ice cream, and second, I was in my room all day, and I didn't even go down once until now. Who has eaten the ice cream? It was Phoenix. Aurora never mentioned the ice cream flavor, but he still knew it. Rachel had been dreaming of becoming a famous actress. Finally, her dream was about to come true. A famed talent agency had invited Rachel for an interview. She arrived at the office to meet her new agent early in the morning. There were four people in the conference room. Can you tell which one is Rachel's agent?
This guy is the only person who doesn't have an employee badge, so he's probably a guest. This man is wearing a classy expensive suit, but he brought coffee for everyone, so he's an assistant. This lady's mug says, world's best lawyer, so she's probably responsible for legal issues. And this relaxed lady over there is Rachel's agent, Zoe. Zoe offered Rachel to take a seat. Which place should Rachel choose? This chair is missing one leg. Someone has spilled coffee on this chair. The barista has written the boss on the drink in this cup and left it on the table next to this chair. And someone has left a sweater on this chair. So Rachel has only one option, and here it is. First of all, Zoe decided to check how smart Rachel was and offered her this puzzle. She used three pencils to make this triangle. Rachel's task was to create a perfect square by moving just one pencil. Can you help her? Here's the answer. After the meeting, Zoe unboxed a delivery from a popular writer. He sent Zoe his new masterpiece in secret. Zoe didn't say anything about this to her colleagues, but one of them was actually trying to steal the script. Can you guess who this person is? It's the assistant. He's using his front camera to take pictures of the mirrored ceiling while Zoe is looking through the script. Zoe brought Rachel to her first audition. Rachel joined other actresses in a line. They were all competing for the lead role in a new series. The main character had poor eyesight, so all actresses put on fake glasses to get into character. Rachel didn't do well enough, and another actress, Sally, got the job. Rachel was very upset. But suddenly, Sally fell to the floor. She was unconscious, and Rachel called an ambulance. Doctors said that someone had poisoned Sally. But all the actresses ate the same snacks and drank the same water. Doctors checked the food, and it was fine. Can you guess what happened there? This actress gave Sally a wet wipe to clean her glasses. The wipe was poisoned. The next day, Rachel arrived at a theater to meet Stan. He was a famous director. She noticed five weird things about this place right away. What about you? Can you see them too? Something's wrong with the gravity, in particular, with this chandelier that isn't hanging from the ceiling as it should. The wind that the fan creates is blowing to the right, but this actress's hair is flowing to the left. There are human footsteps on the ceiling. The spotlights are red, but the lighting on the stage is blue. And this ballerina's shadow is falling in the wrong direction. Stan introduced Rachel to his favorite actors, Josh, Steven, and Tyler. They were triplets that always joked around. But this time, they agreed that one of them would tell the truth, and the other two would lie. They told Rachel about their game. She had to guess their names. The first guy said that he was Josh. The second introduced himself as Steven. And the third guy said, the second person always tells the truth. Can you figure out who is who? If the third guy is telling the truth, then so is the second. But only one brother was supposed to be honest. So the third guy must be lying. This means the second brother is lying too. So then, the first guy must be telling the truth. He is Josh. The second guy is neither Josh nor Steven. He's Tyler. And the third brother is Steven. Stan offered Rachel to play a princess in his new production. Rachel went to the dressing room to apply makeup. Suddenly, she heard a scream. Rachel ran out of the room and saw the main star of the play on the stage covered in paint. Rachel questioned the suspects. Ron, an assistant, claimed that he'd been eating his sandwich on the balcony when it happened. Lily, a stylist, was on the phone with her husband. And Stacy, a cleaner, said she'd been cleaning the bathroom at that moment. Who's guilty?
Ron, he's holding a sandwich, and it's still unwrapped. Now that Rachel got a job, she needed a place to stay in Hollywood. She started looking for an apartment and went to three agencies. Each agency showed her one apartment. Rachel liked them all, but when she examined the apartments, she realized that there were scammers among the realtors. Rachel looked at the documents attentively. Which apartment should she choose? Rachel chose the third option. The first apartment is on the sixth floor, but that's impossible because the building only has five floors. And according to the description of the second apartment, its construction will be finished in 2025. This is 2022, by the way. But Rachel needs an apartment immediately. Rachel rented the third apartment and moved in right away. But something was wrong with the bathroom there. Can you see it? How is she supposed to flush? Can you see anything weird here? There's no shower drain. Rachel heard the doorbell ring. Her neighbors, Peter and Victor, brought her two cakes, but only one of them was edible. Can you tell which one? Victor's cake is sprinkled with almond flakes, while Peter's cake is decorated with human nails. The next day, Zoe texted Rachel to check how she was doing. Rachel sent her this selfie and said, Alone at home, learning my lines. Zoe sent Rachel this reply, What a liar you are! Why? If Rachel's alone, who's that guy? Zoe took Rachel to a party and introduced her to Nick, an eccentric billionaire who was financing one of Zoe's movie projects. They had a brief conversation, and then Rachel lost him in the crowd. In a while, Rachel noticed three guys facing away from her. Each of them looked exactly like Nick. Can you tell who the real Nick is? This guy has a tattoo on his hand, while Nick didn't have it. And this guy's suit is fake. They wrote the brand name with a mistake. Abby was a college student. Every day before classes, she packed a sandwich for lunch. And her meal disappeared from her backpack every single time. After Abby was left hungry once again, she got very angry and decided to track down the thief. The next day, she left her bag in the classroom, hid in a locker, and started waiting. Abby noticed someone pull the sandwich out of the backpack, but she didn't see their face. She decided to ask everyone about the stolen sandwich. Liam said, How dare you! I only eat fruit salads! Jason said, My granny made this sandwich for me. And Chuck said that he just bought his sandwich in the school vending machine. Who's lying? Abby didn't have lettuce in her sandwich, so it must be Jason who stole it. Abby passed her first test in college and decided to throw a party. She invited all of her friends. That was also the evening when Abby found out that one of them wasn't uh -oh. human. Can you tell who? It's Henry. Both of his shoes are for the right foot. During spring break, Abby organized a garage sale to sell some of her old dresses. After a while, Abby got her first customer, Tina. The girl picked only one dress and asked Abby, how much for this dress? Abby answered, $30. Tina didn't want to spend that much, so she asked, could you sell it for $20? Abby agreed. Tina gave her $50, but Abby didn't have any change, so she went to her neighbor to ask for help. The neighbor gave Abby three notes, two 20s and one $10 note. Abby came back, gave $30 to Tina, and put the remaining $20 in her wallet. A few minutes later, the neighbor ran into Abby's garage and shouted, 
That note you gave me is fake. Give me my money back. Abby had to give the man her own money. How much money did she lose? Well, firstly, Abby gave away the dress for free. And its full price was $30 before the discount. Then she had to pay $30 out of her own pocket to her neighbor. So, Abby lost a total of $60. Abby invited her best friend Nina to go skating in the park. Soon, they got really hungry and decided to buy some burgers. They chose similar toppings and added lots of sauces. Ten minutes later, Nina got very sick. Abby had to call 911. Paramedics took the girl to a hospital and diagnosed severe poisoning. Can you tell which sauce was poisoned? This one. Abby didn't use any garlic sauce. When Nina got better, Abby took her for a walk. They spotted the spookiest house in the neighborhood and decided to check it. <laughs> that was a big mistake. When they got inside, the door behind them suddenly disappeared. Now they have three ways out. There's a zombie behind the first door. A creepy vampire is waiting behind the second door. And there's an angry g -g -g ghost behind the third door. Which way is the safest? They should choose the third door. Ghosts may be spooky, but they can't cause any real harm. Okay, well, maybe you might get slimed, but... Nina and Abby found themselves in the next room. The door leading outside was open, and they ran toward it. But an old witch popped out of nowhere and yelled, <laughs> Not so fast! You've got to solve my riddle first! Why are these words in such an order? Nina and Abby failed to crack this riddle. What about you? Here's the correct answer. The words rhyme with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's why they're in this order. The witch teleported Nina and Abby to her basement. But the girls didn't give up and found three ways out again. The room behind the first door was filled with toxic gas. It was extremely harmful to their lungs and skin. There was a 300-pound weight above the second door. It'll crush anyone or anything that steps inside. And a hungry tiger was waiting behind the third door. Abby and Nina hesitated for a while and made the right choice. Which door did they choose? Nina took off her boot and threw it on the floor in the second room. The weight crushed the boot, and the girls ran into the room and closed the door. After that, they escaped through the window. Unfortunately, they got lost in a magical forest. It was cold since it was winter. After wandering around for a while, they saw three roads. All of them seemed dangerous. If they picked the road leading to the left, they'd have to go past some hungry wolves. And if they went straight ahead, they'd have to go through a village where werewolves lived. And the third path went over a lake covered with thin ice that could crack at any moment. Which way should they choose? They should follow the second path. Look at the sky. It's a new moon. And werewolves are only dangerous during a full moon. Nina and Abby got home safely. Oh, but no. someone had burgled their apartment while they were absent. They called the police, and they questioned three neighbors. Jeff said, I was away all weekend, fishing with my friends. Holly said, I didn't leave my home. I was painting the walls in my apartment all weekend. I love bright colors, you know. And Lucy said that she'd been singing karaoke with her friends and hadn't heard anything suspicious. Who's lying? Holly. The walls in her apartment are mostly white, but she said that she painted them in some bright colors. Nina got a job in a bookstore. On her first day at work, she found a vintage watch on the floor. Three people came over to claim it. K 
Kevin said that he'd bought this watch when he got his first salary many years ago. Violet said that she'd inherited the watch from her grandfather. And Dylan said, This watch is priceless. My wife gave it to me for our fifth anniversary. Can you tell who owns this watch? It's Violet. She has the narrowest wrist. That's why the girl made an extra hole. Otherwise, the watch would slip off her hand. Abby went on a date with Jerry. He invited her over. But as soon as Abby got inside his apartment, Jerry turned into an evil wizard. He decided to make fun of her and said, I'll give you a chance to get free. Just make me breakfast tomorrow. If it's good enough, I'll let you go. And if it's bad, you'll stay here. Forever! <laughs> the next morning, Abby came to the kitchen and began cooking. When she turned away from the stove, Jerry added a whole box of salt to the pot. But when Abby served breakfast, Jerry understood that he'd have to let Abby go. What did she cook? She cooked boiled eggs. Larry is a college professor. He gives his worst student, Mike, a task to write an essay within a week. Seven days later, Mike sends Larry a message begging him to postpone the deadline for three days. Larry agrees. Three days later, Larry claims the essay, but now Mike asks for a five-day delay. Larry is very kind, so this time he agrees too. Five days later, Mike shows Larry a burning candle and says, Sir, can you please postpone the deadline till this candle wick burns out? Larry laughs and agrees. Mike laughs too, because now he can forget about submitting the essay. Why? Mike blew out the candle. He said, till this candle wick burns out, not till this flame burns out. So now, Mike can keep his candle unburned forever and never submit his essay. Larry brings three boxes of cupcakes to the college kitchen. He leaves them on the table to celebrate his birthday with co-workers after classes. All boxes have different sizes, but each contains three cupcakes. Mm. Meanwhile, Mike enters the kitchen. He opens one box and eats three cupcakes. After classes, Larry finds out that every box in the kitchen still has three cupcakes. Oh. How is that possible? Mike ate cupcakes from the largest box, and then he put a smaller box into the empty box. So when Larry opened the remaining two boxes, each of them still had three cupcakes. After classes, Mike invites Wendy on a date. Hello. Since they're both broke, they decided to take a bus ride and then walk back. The bus speed is 9 miles per hour, and the guy's walking speed is 3 miles per hour. What's the maximum distance they could ride on the bus if they must come back in 8 hours? Mike and Wendy can move on a bus three times as fast as they can walk. Therefore, they should spend three quarters of their time walking and only one quarter on a bus ride. So to fit into the eight hour limit, they should ride for two hours, going 18 miles, and then walk back in six hours. Mike and Wendy are walking down the street and notice one very curious thing. It has three eyes and all are in a straight line. When its red eye opens, everything freezes. Can you guess what they see? A stoplight. Mike returns to the student dormitory to find out his entire food supply is gone. He questioned three people. Can you guess who ate his food? The guy on the right. He has crumbs on his mustache. Mike goes to the library to study archival newspapers. This newspaper is supposed to have 60 pages, but pages 24 and 41 are missing. Can you guess which other pages won't be there too?
pages 19, 20, 23, 37, 38, and 42 will also be missing. Mike finds a note inside the newspaper. There's a secret maze in the library leading to amazing treasures. The note shows this map. Can you help Mike walk this path correctly? Here's the right way. Mike walks through the maze and finds this bookcase. One of the shelves is fake. Can you spot which one? This shelf is fake. Books on the other shelves are covered with dust and cobwebs. But these books are clean and the cobwebs around them are torn. Mike finds a secret room behind the fake bookshelf. He enters the room and finds a big safe and this weird note nearby. The safe is locked and Mike needs to enter a 9-letter password to open it. Can you help him crack the code? The correct password is Moonlight, and here's why. Take a look at the hint note. All Mike needs to do is to use the corresponding number letter of each word. The first letter in the maze is M. The third letter in looks is O. And the second letter in roses is also O. And so on. Mike opens the safe and finds three identical gemstones and a note. Ooh. Suddenly, the door to the secret room slams shut and the walls begin to shrink. Mike reads the note. Only one of these diamonds is real. Find it and put it into the lock. You only have 15 seconds. Good luck. Oh, no. Can you help Mike spot the fake diamonds? Mike should drop all three stones into this glass of water on the table. If the diamond is real, it will drop to the bottom of the glass thanks to its high density. And if it's a fake, it will float on the surface. Mike succeeds and unlocks the door leading to a secret hallway. Yeah. He walks through the hallway and sees four doors and a beautiful statue in the middle of the space. The statue sings, We came out at night without being called. We disappeared by morning without being stolen. Who are we? Can you guess which door Mike should enter? The song has a hint for Mike. The statue is singing about stars. Therefore, Mike should choose the door decorated with stars. Mike enters the next room and meets a queen. She says, Hello, stranger. I have a task for you. If you succeed, I'm going to reward you with wealth and fame. But if you fail, you'll stay here forever as my prisoner. I want to renovate my kingdom so that all my ten castles are connected through five straight walls. And each wall must connect four castles together. Also, at least one of the castles should be protected with walls. Then, the queen shows him this picture and continues. My royal architect failed to give any solution that meets all my wishes, but he suggested this plan. Do you have a better idea? Mike should offer this solution to please the queen. Now two castles are protected with walls. The queen kept her word and made Mike very rich. Also, she threw a feast in his honor. Unfortunately, not all royal servants are glad to see their queen with a new favorite. Take a look at these three people. Can you spot Mike's hater? Although this friendly looking lord gives Mike a bag of gold coins, there's a snake hiding inside his gift. Mike is observing the royal garden. He sees three lemon trees. Each of them has exactly 10 lemons. The gardener comes over and picks four oranges from each tree. Can you calculate the number of fruits left on the lemon trees? Thirty. Oranges don't grow on lemon trees. The queen tells Mike an amazing story. 
I'm fond of dragon racing. On Sunday, I rode to see a race in a cozy village outside of my kingdom. Five days later, on Monday, I went home. Can you explain this, considering that she doesn't have a time machine? Sunday is the name of her dragon. Mike likes the kingdom very much, but it's time to go home. The queen gives him 3,000 gemstones the size of a watermelon. He rents a truck to carry them home. Mike's current location is 1,000 miles away from home. Unfortunately, the truck can only carry 1,000 gemstones at once. Also, there's a check post on every mile till home. Each post requires all drivers to pay with one gemstone while traveling towards Mike's hometown. But the road is free of charge while traveling towards the kingdom. Can you figure out a way to bring the highest possible number of gems to Mike's hometown? Mike should make three trips of 1,000 gemstones each till mile 333. After that, he will be left with 2,001 gemstones and have 667 more miles to go. At this point, he should take two trips of 1,000 gemstones covering 500 miles more. This way, he will be left with 1,000 gemstones. After riding the remaining 167 miles, Mike will be left with 833 gems. And he'll still be rich and fabulous. Rhonda found three root vegetables in the garden, but only one of them was mandragora. Can you figure out which veggie Rhonda should pick? Even if you've never seen a mandrake, you can eliminate the other plants. This is definitely a carrot, and this is a beet, so the remaining one must be the mandragora. Lucy and Rhonda prepared to leave the spooky house, but suddenly they stepped on a trap hidden in the grass and fell into a deep well. They looked around and found three tunnels leading to freedom. A fire-breathing dragon was waiting in the first tunnel. It was very angry and disliked people. There was a portal leading into a black hole in the second tunnel, and huge cacti were growing all over the third tunnel. Their juice was poisonous to any human. Which way should Lucy and Rhonda choose? The third one. Look, those cacti don't have any spines, and no one's gonna force the girls to drink cactus juice. Vera cooked the potion for Joy. Lucy and Rhonda took it to the girl's house. But when they entered her room, it was empty. Joy's parents said that Lily and Joy had left together. They were both acting very weird. Rhonda said, Oh no, they've both turned into vampires. We've got to find them before it's too late. Can you help them find any clues in Joy's room? Look at her laptop. They seem to have bought train tickets to go to Las Vegas to visit Joy's granny. Lucy and Rhonda boarded the train. Besides them, there were four other people in the car. One of these passengers didn't have a ticket. Can you figure out who it is? This woman. She's the only one who's hiding her head behind the headrest of her seat so that the camera doesn't spot her. When the train was going through a tunnel, the lights went out and the passengers got very frightened. When the light turned on again, one of the passengers shouted, Help me! Someone has stolen my bag! Lucy immediately realized who had done this. What about you? Any ideas? Yeah, this guy. There's some makeup lying under his seat, and his window is open. He put the contents of the bag into his backpack, and then threw the bag out the window. Rhonda and Lucy got to Las Vegas, and headed for the house where Joy's granny lived. But they kept coming to the wrong houses. In the first house, they met this old lady, and in the second, there was this one. Can you tell which elderly woman is dangerous?
it's the second one. She's up to something, while the first one is just getting ready for a Halloween party. Finally, Lucy and Rhonda found the right house. The door was open. When they entered, they saw Joy's granny unconscious on the floor. She had a oh, vampire no. bite on her neck. Suddenly, Joy and Lily popped out of nowhere. They had pale faces, sharp teeth, and pointy ears. They came closer and closer, ready to bite their friends. Suddenly, Rhonda began laughing and exclaimed, huh, Stop fooling around, it's just a prank! How did she know? The mirror reflects Joy, and Lily casts a shadow. They're not real vampires, it's just a Halloween prank. Joy went to take a shower to remove her vampire makeup. But someone poured paint into the shower head, and the water turned green. Joy questioned Lucy, Rhonda, and Lily. Lucy said, I did my laundry and then went to cook some kiwi jam. Sorry, I gotta go, it might burn. Lily said, I took a shower and washed my hair right before you went in. What happened? Why are you so green? And Rhonda said, I'm studying for my geometry test. Can you keep it down, please? Who pranked Joy? Lily said she'd just washed her hair, but it's dry and braided. Besides, she's wearing a dress under her bathrobe. That's a pretty suspicious outfit. Rhonda decided to prank Lily. She took a balloon and a cupcake paper cup. She filled the balloon with some water and put it into the paper cup. Then she added some shaving cream on top and decorated it all with sprinkles. Now it looked exactly like a real cupcake. Rhonda was very proud of herself. Suddenly, she heard other girls entering the kitchen. Rhonda left her cupcake on a plate, along with real cupcakes, and hid under the table. Lily, Lucy, and Joy entered the kitchen, saw the cupcakes, and decided to eat them. Can you tell who took the prank cupcake? Joy, the real cream has already melted, but the shaving cream still looks perfect. 